academic publishing is broken. Students come to me and say, hey prof, I got my manuscript done, I can't wait to submit it, but the journal's asking me to pay $3,000. Is, is that right? Am I, am I missing something? It's like you just got to the finish line, you're excited, and then you see the goalpost move, and yet there's another unexpected hurdle on the way. Listen, this is a corporate plague in the sector of academic research. And it can really lead you to feeling deflated if you don't know how to navigate it. So I'm gonna give you the insights on what's broken about this academic world and publishing in research journals and what you can do to better navigate it to still publish in high impact journals without the cost. But first, before I dive into that, I want to go straight to something I've never seen before, which is exciting, the beginnings of a revolt to this broken system, which is the mass resignation of the editorial board of a journal, Critical Public Health. Let me share my screen and I'll show you exactly what's been going on with the journal. Critical Public Health is an open access journal, which means its research is accessible to everybody. And I'm a big fan of this model because I believe research is a public good and should be accessible for all at no cost. The problem is with many public goods like parks, everybody wants to benefit, but nobody wants to pay for it. And this is what the editors have been protesting, the broken financial model and the consequences of that model. So at the time of making this video, just a few weeks ago, the editors, all 45 of them, mass resigned. They're currently looking for new editors. And importantly, they forced the publishing house, Taylor Fransel, to publish their editorial explaining why this article moving on in uncertain times. A goodbye. And let's dive into this article a little bit to understand what's going on. So the editorial board highlights that the system is just financially unsustainable and criticize the deep inequalities that it's creating. That's because simply asking most researchers to pay several thousands of dollars isn't viable. Now, in some cases, if you're blessed to be in this situation, your institution may have an agreement with the journal like this Taylor and Francis journal in which they subscribe in exchange for rights to publish and waive those open access fees. But many resource deprived institutions, especially those in the global south, don't have these costly agreements in place, putting the burden financially on those researchers themselves at those institutions, which is almost, for many of you who are graduate students, completely impossible. They point out that profit maximization is one of the big issues. And it's really true. The New Scientist has pointed out that academic publishing arguably is one of the most profitable industries in the world with margins up to 40%. That is a staggering figure. But it gets worse because the whole system, the bedrock of the system depends on free voluntary work. The job that I've done, and it is a job as a peer reviewer or as an editor, all depends on us investing time, energy to review these papers, help improve them for them to go on and be published. And the editors here are criticizing that the journals are exploiting this free labor and profiting on it. And to give you an example from my own search, I get contacted routinely. Here I've searched review and you see here, over the past two months, I'm getting asked by a ton of journals, tons of journals to review papers. Uh, that turns into easily a full-time job if you're gonna invest the two hours at least you need to do to really give good quality feedback to authors of a paper that you're reviewing for publication in the journal. The editors continue and they say, look, a number of radical interventions have tried to do this, to stay committed to open access, which we all strongly support, but it's very hard to go independent of the corporate sector. You still run into the financial problem that's undergirding this whole mess of how do we get quality peer review? How do we get editors? How do we get copy editors, typesetters, librarians, and so on and so forth. So uh, before mass resigning, these editors hinted to us that they have a plan. So watch this space. They're not just resigning and disappearing into the shadows and hiding in their closets. They are starting a new radical innovative journal. So I'm excited, I'm gonna report back to you. So stay tuned, watch this space. But uh, what can you do in this situation? Uh, I do work with a lot of students in my Facebook group. If you haven't joined already, do be sure to join. We can communicate directly and that's exactly the platform for dealing with these kinds of shared collective challenges and charting new paths to uh, improve this broken system. Uh, what can you do? So I, I've got an off uh, paper here that I've been looking at recently 
And I wanna show you how to get here because this is important. So if you go and you search for your journal, whatever the name is, you're gonna find an author page or a submit your manuscript page. And when you go there, you're gonna find often article processing charges and waivers and discount. Let's just uh, slide here and you can see here, wow. I mean, when I look at this, it just goes up and up. It's staggering. Authors can pay, this pay to play, it's 3,000, about 3,300 pounds to publish open access, exclusive of, exclusive of that. So add another 20% to that. That is a staggering cost. Now the good news is many of you can benefit from waivers and discounts. Um, so if you have an author uh, at a developing country, space there, you may be eligible for a partial or a full waiver. Always check this, always ask. It never hurts to ask. The other thing that can happen too is they can offer more coupons, which sort of really irritates me that oh, you can get a coupon to publish my paper. But if you have done peer review for the journal, they do offer some discounts here. Still, it's worth checking uh, if you have to pay out of your grant or your research coffers at the university, you do wanna keep the cost down. The other thing that can happen, as I said, is if you have a funding source or if your institution has an open access agreement, that can waive the cost. Many people just don't know about this. For example, I've been uh, in Italy for a long time and I didn't know that Italy had an agreement with Springer Journals to cover open access fees and check. Uh, and that's very easy to check. And uh, if you sc scroll through here, you'll find that list of what agreements are in place with the different publishing houses and journals. Tap into that. So what though, if you don't have this, uh, don't despair because what the journals secretly and quietly don't wanna advertise because they're trying to protect their 40% margins is that look here, regardless of the funding situation, they will still publish your article at no cost. Now, the articles won't be open access. That could create a problem for cita citations down the road. But even this, there is a legal way to make your paper accessible to contribute to that public commons, that park uh, model that I said of science and publications that I do believe is so crucially important. So what's next? Listen, if you are about to submit your manuscript and you're feeling lost navigating the system, join my Facebook group. We can directly be in touch there and we have a series of longer length, more dedicated trainings that would take you step by step into mystifying the publishing process, which if you're doing this for the very first time, honestly, can be a bit bewildering. Um, so get in touch, we'll see you there, and I'm gonna keep you tuned on what happens with this radical innovative experiment. I'm excited, I can't share the details with you yet of what the editors of Critical, Critical Public Health are gonna do blazing a new trail. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.